Hi, scrolling along with Susan. I have a new video today. This is gonna be based on the last video that I did that was showing you how to create a trivet or a plate that you can set something hot on in GIMP. And I'm gonna show you in this video how to actually make one. My trivet pattern is cut out. It ended up being about seven and a half inches wide, nine inches tall. I made a couple of alterations once I printed it out to show a little bit more of a definition between my large morel mushroom and my smaller one. Now, the choice of woods. I am using a hardwood. This is walnut. It was only six inches wide, so I had to glue two pieces together for the width. Hardwoods are better to work with, I think, than softwoods because if you set something hot on it, it may uh, damage the softwood. Plus, normally you finish softwoods with a polyurethane or something, and that wouldn't be very good to set something hot on it. The hardwoods you can finish just with oils and it's much safer. Also try to stick with a half an inch to five eighths inch thick to protect your table. And it's easier to cut on a scroll saw than something three quarters of an inch thick or an inch thick. You could work with that, but it, it's a little bit harder to work with on a scroll saw. I just wanted to show you one of my very first patterns that I cut out. And this is not my pattern, but it, it, it came from a book and when I printed it out, put it on just a soft wood and started cutting the holes, I went, oh my goodness, it's going to take me forever to finish this. And now it's a piece of cake. Now I have this glued and sanded and I'm going to audition different areas on here to see which one I like the best. I will be using blue painter's tape to put on the front and then spraying Gorilla spray adhesive to my pattern and glue it to the blue painter's tape. Using this blue painter's tape saves so much time later on when you're trying to remove the pattern. It comes off very easily. If you attach the pattern directly to the wood, you would have an awful lot of sanding to do to get rid of all that glue residue. I'm just using a pencil to mark the outline on my blue painter's tape so when I glue it and flip it over I know exactly where to place it. And I wanted to point out that you don't have to use Gorilla Glue, you can use any kind of adhesive to secure it to the blue painter's tape as long as it doesn't move on you. I would let this dry Let's glue dry on here for at least 10 minutes. I'm over here at my drill press. Make sure that you have a sacrificial piece behind your board so that you don't have tear out on the other side because this trivet can be used on both sides if you'd like. You can also use a hand drill as long as you're at 90 degree angle when you're drilling the holes. <laughs> I have most of my holes drilled. I have an entry hole right here in the center out on the outside because I'm going to be cutting my outside piece first. You don't want to really start from the edge and go in because the piece can lose support when you're cutting the whole outside frame. It's best to drill a hole in the middle, start there in the middle, and end in the middle so the whole piece has support. The other thing that I did is change to a 1 16th inch drill bit so that I can do very thin lines to show the separation of the stems. After you've finished drilling all your holes, make sure you sand the bottom so that it will lay nice and smooth on your scroll saw. You're at your scroll saw and it's time for your scroll saw blade selection. My two favorites are Pegasus and Flying Dutchman. You might have your own favorites. Because I'm dealing with 5 h inch of hardwood, I'm going to go with a number 5 or a number 7. If you have a softwood, you could probably get away with a 3 or something like that. But there are people that use 3s all the time and 2s. They just have to change their blades more often. So whatever you're comfortable with. So I'm using a number 5 scroll reverse blade. And if you don't know which direction to put it in, run your finger on the top of it. The smooth end goes down. The rough end goes up. I'll be cutting my outline out first so I have a little less material to work with. It'll be a little bit easier to turn. 
These notes that I'll be giving you right now are mainly for the new scroll SARS. You want to make sure to have your hand placed on either side of your piece and lightly keep it against the table so it does not lift up and bang on you. And it also is much easier to turn the piece when you have your hands on both sides. This is an excellent practice pattern because you do not have to be exact on the holes. If you slip a little bit, it's okay and you keep going. Plus, I wanted to point out that I'm a bottom feeder. I feed the blade through the piece from the bottom instead of the top. Either way is acceptable. You find out what works best for you and go with that. So be kind to yourself. If you make a small mistake, it's okay. One thing I wanted to show you was wherever you drill your hole and you're cutting out and you might have a little piece that's still sticking out, it is best, instead of trying to sand it, use your scroll saw to kind of smooth that edge right there where that lip was. It's much quicker. This is just an example on how I smooth out that inside edge. It is time to put a fresh new blade in. And here's how I can tell. So I've cut the whole outside out and I've cut quite a few of the inside cuts. And I noticed I was trying to push slightly on the blade. And then the last piece that I cut out has got a little bit of markings on it, which means it's gonna start burning really soon. So it's time to change the blade. Here I'm just doing my last cut before continuing on. It's time to remove the blue painter's tape. And after you remove that, there's gonna be a little bit of residue left from the tape. So I take mineral spirits and I actually clean the whole piece off just to make sure there's no residue left. Then it's time after it dries to use 220 grit, sand everything on your piece. Sand the insides, the outsides, everything you can and use whatever tools that you have available for sanding. I have quite a few different tools that I use. Then when you're done sanding, clean it off a little bit and you're ready to give it a bath. I take water and I dip my project in water. And what that does is it raises the grain. After it dries, you do another light sanding and then you're ready to finish it. The last step is to finish your piece. And I just use plain mineral oil. And since there's so many holes in this, I actually put it in a reusable pan and pour right in on the holes so I get coverage on in the holes. I like to use my fingers. You could use a rag, but this way I can feel um, each spot, making sure, because there's a lot of curves in this, making sure that everything is covered. And you'll want to put two to three coats of this on. Let it drip dry and then wipe off the excess. Here's my completed trivet that I can use on either side. It's not round, it's not traditional. I like to think outside the box. If you don't want to use it as a trivet, you can always just hang it on the wall. Either way, it's gonna be a nice conversation piece. I hope you've really enjoyed watching this video. If you like what you see, click that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.